Um, I'm Daryl Sharp. I'm a science teacher here in Hong Kong, and I have an undergraduate degree in biology. And I'm, you know, I'm a nature lover. And I love getting out. I love hiking. This type of stuff, and I'm just, you know, curious about um, living things. Something that occurs to me when I was doing some summer research when I was younger, when more of a science person, not a teacher, then was that then not knowing what stuff was and how it interacts with an ecosystem. You know, the biodiversity of any place is just so diverse that, you know, I am no expert on it anywhere. And now I live in Hong Kong, and everything here is very different. And I really am curious about it. And I don't know what it is and and how it works together. And then, so it's always been that kind of issue. How do I learn what these things are? And I've tried, you know, through some internet resources and some books and some keys and stuff like this. Too. And then but being a science person, I think I am, really on average, probably a little more observant than the average hiker, too. You know, I look at the, the structures and functions of plants and things like this that some people might not even look at, or what's crawling around on the ground and the dirt, or even the geology, too. I like all this stuff. As a science teacher, I went to a teacher training workshop with uh, Sean Martin, and it was there that I was introduced to the iNatural staff. Sean Martin had other experts, you know, from the universities in Hong Kong there for us to talk to, you know, insect people and bird people, and then uh, graduate students doing research on, you know, on tidal mudflats and things like this, too. And so, you know, for me, of course, it was always really great to meet these people and talk to them. They're like, how do I have access to those people? You know, and I don't, because they're busy. They're doing their research. And an app like iNaturalist, where you can see something, you know, try and take a good photo of it, try and document the location and any notes you can put on there and, and uploading it to this online community, then you start to see like, people IDing it, and you're in touch with this community of experts. And then this is the real thing that kind of does it for me, is like that, you know, I have access to this online community, and they can help me ID things, and I can learn about what I'm seeing or what I'm curious about, and then I can go on to my deeper research from there, too. So it satisfies the personal need for me to about uh, what I'm seeing and what I want to know about with the species here in Hong Kong. As I started to look at, um, look, I guess more on the, the web interface by naturalists, too, is that how you could actually see the data see all this stuff that's being pushed up from users like myself and going there and how it's populating in, in locations and in my categories and how you can filter and look at things on there too and I thought this is really powerful. It's something that is a large database where you could ask you know specific ecological questions and figure out what's going on with biodiversity. I, I can learn and have people come back and say oh this was some type of skink I saw this little lizard under a leaf there so I don't know anything about these lizards but now I can learn about it into or what, what was that little snake or what is this plant and so my personal curiosity gets satisfied by using iNaturalist and and then the second thing is the, the, the community building that happens there too that uh, individual users like me whether they're a science background or not are suddenly connected to people that can help them identify stuff and learn about stuff in, in nature. When you step back and this is something I've always been aware of as a kind of science background person but it develops agency in you to be a part of something that you know I'm connecting to that community and I'm not just kind of accessing it but I'm contributing as well too it's good to support that type of stuff and, and feel like you know that just people out hiking or out in nature can contribute to scientists looking at you know whatever it is changes in biodiversity or impacts or things like this too so I, I it's kind of an eye-opening kind of thing for me and I think it's fabulous try and do some things with the school with getting kids engaged with it and we're still working on that to try and embed it into the curriculum like within certain classes and stuff but we'll do these city nature challenges with the students let them know about iNaturalist and how citizen science can work and how they can contribute with just classroom teaching kind of traditionally um, students might not find it so relevant but when they're connected to a larger community or to their place then it becomes much more authentic and if they're literally contributing data to someone's research and then it's just so much more powerful learning to them um, that we get students to engage with uh, people doing research, whether it's NGOs or scientists or, or other schools and stuff. You know, values within them too, and how their actions can align with those values too, and then they can be agents of change. You know, even as middle school students or lower school students or high school students or, or wherever they're at too, that you know there are ways that they can help. I naturalist and what I do personally can also feed into my professional life as an educator too and then trying to push this through and, and embed it in more parts of curriculum and with students and classes to make it uh, more powerful for you know, uh, learning about our world and how it's changing and what we can do to, to help it.